know, my keynote speech was on the heterogeneous system architecture, HSA for short, because it's quite a, quite a mouthful. And uh, the concept of H HSA is bringing together different types of compute units, CPUs, graphics units, and fixed function units into a single architecture. And when we say a single architecture, we really mean that they're basically able to work on one problem simultaneously. And this starts with a bunch of, with a bunch of key attributes of the system in order, to, in order to achieve that. You know, number one, a single address space, a single virtual address space but that both the CPU, GPU, as well as fixed function devices can, can, can address. That allows you now to start sharing data um, without moving the data. Right? Today, in our, in our current architecture, you have to basically, if you want to work, in a, work on the CPU, the data, if it's at the CPU, that's great. But the minute you want to go and start executing on the GPU, you need to copy the data so then the GPU can start executing it. What we really want is the data to sit in one place and each of the functional units, whether it's CPU or GPU, can access that that without moving any, any data. Now a second attribute you, you, you immediately want is coherency. Um, it's very important that the CPU and the GPU can work on the same data simultaneously, but they don't step on each other. And so we have a coherency, hardware coherency mechanism that allows these two to work together without destroying the benefits of parallelism, but allow both units to work simultaneous on one problem. You couldn't imagine living without context switching on a CPU. Can you imagine one program could lock a piece of hardware down forever. That's not, you know, not viable. We want, you know, so we need to add context switching to the GPU. This allows multiple programs to share the one piece of hardware. The GPU is still going to be used for visualization. It's still going to be, have that very large context, which means we've invented something called preemption, which allows us to push aside the, uh, the, the context that, basically the, the large state that is being displayed via the frame buffer on the, on the screen and now start running compute on it and then pull that compute out via context switching and then bring back in that, the GPU context so that we could start again executing, you know, for example, a Direct3D app on the, on the screen. The other key attributes that, that we need to think about is, is a software programmer. And I, I, I don't really like to call a, soft, a person a software programmer. I really like to call him an artist. And this is what really drove us to this architecture. You know, we didn't want the artists to be thinking about things that are outside their vision, right? So, you know, it's important that we, 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 we embody in this the ability to have domain libraries where experts can come up with things like gesture recognition, other, other types of things that take advantage of you know, the parallel applications we have. And then a normal programmer can just call those. So we always want the programmer to be seeing things very simply. You know, when they do know they have parallel data, parallel operations, they can, they can identify that. But they can also use libraries to make their life, life much simpler. You know, a key part of HSA is, is, is a, the intermediate language. Now, the intermediate language is, is, a, is a virtual ISA. So it's not tied to x86 or to a particular GPU ISA. It's a virtual ISA. And this is very important in that we can now basically if everybody codes to this virtual ISA, the underlying hardware now can be different because we take HSAIL, the HSA intermediate language, we run it through a just-in-time compile that basically does a translation to the final ISA. So if it's x86 and AMD, it'll do it to that. If it's x86 and say in NVIDIA, it could do it to that ISA. So very important to make code much more portable, you know, and really that first step towards all code runs everywhere, regardless of machine. And that's very important here, because this architecture, it scales from a supercomputer down to a cell phone perfectly. It's a truly scalable architecture. It does not have any breakpoints based on any of the markets that we've seen to date or any that we can envision going forward.